Thank you. Thank you, Kev. So yes, I am an MD in Accenture, but it's been a long journey uh, to get there. Uh, I'm actually leading emerging technology in UKI and, uh, and also a virtual agent uh, and artificial intelligence. And I really related uh, to some of the uh, uh, messages uh, on the pre previous presentation because you know, even if you, you know, don't build your own business, actually being out there and innovating, although it's going much faster, is kind of a bit of a roller coaster as well. Uh, we had the number, I had a number of up and downs in my career, and AI has been one of them. I, um, I did study artificial intelligence in one of the Grand Ecoles in, uh, in France uh, more than 18 years ago. <coughs> And it took quite a while to convince people that was the time. And I think finally, over the last uh, couple of years, we see AI actually starting to transform the business and coming in, in great forces. Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, I really like the topic of AI also because it gives another dimension to a number of things that were not possible before. Uh, AI is giving a lot of accessibility to the older generation, for instance. AI is really transforming a number of things we're doing and I really believe the future is actually much brighter uh, with, with it. Uh, so I think before um, I go into a, a little bit of, uh, of depth into how we use AI and how we see it transforming the world, I wanted to kind of play a, a quick video for you uh, to explain that. Over the last century, we've transitioned to an online world with billions of viewpoints. Not just from our governments and businesses, but from each and every one of us. Today, we need technology for the people. Technology that works with us, designed to amplify our voices, our hopes and our ambitions. Sophisticated AI will make interfaces simpler and smarter, replacing cumbersome tools and working with people to fulfill their true priorities. Technology will adapt based on how we want to interact. People will choose the direction and technology will teach itself to follow. People won't be restricted by process, but instead will be free to build stronger relationships augmented by technology. We've done our research on the future. Have you? I think the great thing with AI is that finally the, um, the focus is actually becoming on us, individual, consumer, you know, employees, and, and you know, moving you know, f the focus from um, businesses wanting to expose the services outside to the world to actually you know, focus on the con consumer and, and what we want to get out of it. So one of the things that everybody is agreeing on is actually the trend are quite massive, and this is coming like a huge wave on us. Yeah? Um, one of the quotes that I like a lot from Gardner is, by 2020, you'll be more likely to speak to the chatbot than to your own spouse, yeah? Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, in terms of number, there's quite a big number in there. So I think today we, we're going to focus the conversation on how it does change the customer interactions, how you actually, uh, and we created a model to actually talk, talk it through, uh, where we have like four particular area. So one is that conversational interface, and um, I'm going to do a quick demo of that, I see. Um, um, and then number two is augmented intelligence. So AI really helps kind of uh, making sense of very complicated data and give it uh, that personal insight for you. Number three is 24-7 <coughs> customer care. Um, we see a lot of our customer now moving into you know, uh, messaging uh, to do customer care where you can ask uh, your you questions and get your answers and you really have a conversation around that. And number four is around advice. Yeah? So advice is a little bit more complicated it is the next stage of AI, is collecting a number of information about a particular 
uh, user and being able to do the recommendation on the back of it. So this is kind of a framework on how AI is changing uh, customer interaction. Obviously, AI is very pervasive and there's millions of ways of, of implementing it. I even had a, a bank coming to us asking us how oh, uh, we could help them with the stress testing uh, <laughs> of, uh, of the bank. So, so definitely millions of applications. This is definitely focused on the customer interaction side of things. So just to, um, to go on the conversational interfaces, so I have Alexa here. How many of you have Alexa at home? Uh, so not that many, just 10 maybe, yeah. So Alexa, wrap for me. Connect sync link all the pieces of your Li-Fi. Get it done at the speed of Wi-Fi. I'm the player, the coach, the arena, and the game. If you want something done, you just got to say my name. <laughs> Alexa, open my bank. Hi, welcome to Open Banking. How can I help you today? What is my account balance? You have £9,510.50 in your account. This is test data. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me how else I can help you, or say help, to find out what I can do. Alexa, can you send money? The network is a little how bit... How much would you like to transfer? <laughs> 20 pounds. I think the network is a bit slow, that's why it's not working. But basically, just to give you a feel, you, we actually connected Alexa to uh, the Open Banking Project. So as you would probably know, if you're in banking, there's the PSD2 regulation coming up in 2018, which is going to open up banks uh, much more. Uh, and, and, and that means that they'll have interfaces and, and you'll be able to actually connect to them. So the beauty of that is you can be in your kitchen, do a transfer, we, um, you know, we added security on the top of it, so we send you one-time password and things like that. But more important, importantly, it can help older people uh, to do some of those things without having to go to the bank, uh, you know, in the comfort of their own home. Um, I had a friend recently, and she, she, she ran a marathon, and there was a big stress because her grandmother wanted to do a donation for the marathon, and she couldn't find a checkbook, and it was, was big, big drama. This is the type of technology that can make it much more accessible. Um, so Amazon Echo uh, is there on the market for, for a while now. Uh, it's been in the US for more than a couple of years and in the UK since September last, last, last year. What Amazon uh, realized when they actually published the Echo is this is giving you um, six more percent <laughs> uh, uh, opportunity to buy new things and they're getting quite a lot of their revenue from, from, from the Echo itself. Uh, one of the, we ran a project uh, when Echo kind of launched in the UK with, um, with a resource company and they estimated the impact of having a skill on Echo uh, to uh, augment their brand value by 20 points. Uh, so so th th this is kind of, a, uh, kind of putting um, your brand in people's home as well and it, it does have a, a, an impact. Um, so, so this is kind of the, the first kind of dimension of it. The second, uh, the second dimension is augmented intelligence. Uh, so, you know, we all talked about analytics for a long time, but actually AI can push things much further than that. So, for instance, oops, I'm quite small. Um, I like uh, closing particular shapes. And um, the uh, personal shopper for North Face is actually detecting those things in people's personal habit to shop. And, you know, when you actually go on the website, instead of having, you know, the normal clothes or things like that, they would already look at the colors you like, the shape you like, and really kind of do that pre-processing for you and, and, and use artificial intelligence to actually uh, kind of learn from your behaviors and, and what, what you like and what you don't like and match it with some of those things. Actually, there's been very powerful uh, instead of a you know marketing campaign typically would give you one or two percent or you know a few percent of, of click through where actually they put AI to, to power this up they got 60 percent click through so you really get on getting under the skin of the personalization not um, 
also because, you know, typically we white color, and we've done that for years and years, we pretended we knew the customer, <laughs> and we designed things in the way we thought was right, yeah? But people don't necessarily kind of um, have the same point of view, and things work, or things don't work, and there's much more segment that we want. Um, what, what AI does, it can help you do that classification to a different level of details, yeah? So typically our brain will find five or six categories of things where AI can just go to that next level of depth and, and really kind of uh, power some of those experiences. So the, the, uh, the next box is about uh, customer experience or customer care. So we have a lot of that coming through uh, now. A lot of our clients are actually doing a lot in that space, um, kind of having a, a, either chatbots to have a chat on a particular problem and try to resolve it, sometimes just doing uh, frequently asked questions, resolving a problem or, or providing a piece of advice. So we have a lot of that coming through on a number of um, customers are, are, are getting their teeth into that. It's almost like the next generation after <laughs> labor arbitrage is a bit of a, a, a chatbot in, in there. One of the things that's working very well too is asynchronous messages. So, you know, a lot of us have very busy day and we can't really, you know, send in, you know, even having a five minute chat with somebody and having to wait for the answer is a pain. So, um, sending messages, you know, saying, oh, I have that problem and being able to have a text back kind of telling you, you know, this is the answer is actually kind of a, a quite a good way of doing things. Um, so, we have, a, we have a government department in, in Italy where we implemented a, a voice and text uh, customer care center, you know, powered by artificial intelligence. And um, on the back of it, we had a, a massive, it was quite surprising, the customer satisfaction <laughs> improved quite significantly. And we realized that actually people didn't mind talking to a bot as long as they got their problems solved faster. And, and quicker, yeah, you, you know, like, so, so that if, if the interface is simple um, and if it actually give you and do the job that people, you know, came here today, actually people don't, don't mind that. Uh, so, so we've seen that. It's always a good practice too, because, you know, in call center, in, in some of those places, there's a number of, um, of, of things that are done because people know and they've been doing that, but it's not really what's written on the, on, on, on the paper. And when you, when you get new people coming, then they don't exactly know what to do and how to do it. So there's always that learning curve. Well, actually, when you start modelizing that into a, a tool, obviously, you, you know, it, it, it's all there and then, and, it, and it's, it's quite fast. Uh, so, so we had like a, a very big success. I think now the number of tickets resolved by a virtual agent is at 95% uh, there. So what, what happened there is we didn't displace the people that, that were there. They were, they, they've been retrained to actually do other kind of um, uh, higher value activity, thinking about the next service that's coming on board, uh, thinking about you know, some of those um, points that are uh, kind of quite uh, not iron dot. You know, one of the things I tell my client very often is, you know, what, I'm asking them the question, what's the customer satisfaction on your call center at the moment? And there's very few people that have a call center satisfaction above 80%, to be honest. It's more like around the 50, 60. So there's always a lot of room for growth into actually making those interaction frictionless. Um, so the last one is a, a virtual advisor. Uh, so this is kind of a more complicated version of artificial intelligence because you need to kind of have a conversation with a real human to collect the fact and the circumstances and use it to actually provide advice on the back of it. So uh, in the Liquid Studio that I'm leading in, uh, in, in London, we have uh, Colette, uh, our mortgage advisor of the future, and she does that. She's collecting some facts and circumstances and on the back of that, recommending mortgage products. So this is a prototype and we're talking to a number of banks to do that, but we've proven that this is actually quite possible to do. Uh, to do. Um, it's probably not for all of us, uh, but for people that are tech savvy, uh, that are embracing technology, that don't have much time, having a conversation with a virtual advisor rather than having to wait for an appointment in branch or on the telephone is actually kind of um, um, 
uh, quite good. One of the things we've done as well is we work with risk and uh, the, MCOB, uh, the MCOB experts to actually really summarize the customer experience to the minimum level so you don't have to spend a lot of time on things you, don't, you already know uh, and can go directly into kind of answering the questions. Um, we're also doing that uh, at the large um, uh, bank at the moment in, in Finland and talking about their investment portfolio. So all of that is actually coming quite quite hard. Uh, I think it's for the it's, it's for the for the better in the sense that it'll give uh, a number of customers much more flexibility. So for some of the people that are, don't have that much time or for some of the people that actually can't access the service like the older generation or the people that are disabled. So a lot of use cases coming in that way uh, for us. Uh, I think, you know, AI has been there forever, you know, I think Turing kind of created the, <laughs> the term in 1956, uh, but now it's been coming quite hard on us, and we see like the improvement in the last few years are so massive that we can now speak in natural language uh, to machines, and the machine will understand you. Uh, we made some massive uh, progress as well in computer vision, so all of those things, those error rates are actually uh, going down, and, and the and the adoption is actually taking off quite, quite a lot. One of the things I was uh, looking at recently was a report on adoption and the pace of it. Um, I think it took 62 years for cars to reach the first 50 million users. Um, it took uh, a couple of years for Twitter to have 50 million users. And you can see, I think we're starting that curve with AI. It, it, is, it is rocketing. You know, a, a year ago we had a few pilots running and now we're starting to have clients wanting to do big transformation program. Um, so this is just coming uh, really fast. So the future is now. And we're all using it every day. Great.